Hey everybody, welcome to Board Game Heaven. My name is Raymond, and in this video I'm taking a look at Black Skull Island by Luigi Ferrini, published by Strawberry Studio, and I'd like to thank Strawberry Studio for giving me this review copy. This is a game for two to nine players, and it plays in about 20 to 30 minutes, and it's a game where everybody has a different kind of role and does different things on their turn. There's a lot of take that going on. So I'll open up the box and show you what's inside. I'll explain how to set up the game and how to play the game, and then I'll give you my final thoughts. So let's take a look at the box first. It says Black Skull Island by Luigi Farini with some cool artwork of a little pirate and its parrot opening a box of loot. It is for two to nine players, plays in about 20 minutes, ages eight and up by Strawberry Studios. And on the back of the box, there's a little bit of a story there with some cool illustrations and the contents listed. So let's uh, open it up and see what's inside. It is just a card game, so all you will find. Aside from the rule book are cards. Now the rule book is uh, pretty small. It's uh, only a couple of pages with setup, overview, the round, and a couple of uh, extra things you need to know, final scoring. So it's about five pages of rules, not even, and that's it. So it's quick to learn and to teach. Then you got two inserts here in this uh, plastic insert, and they come shrink-wrapped. I already unpacked them. You've got some reference cards. There's two for each player, and there's nine sets of these. There are these treasure cards that have just one coin. So the one single coin cards, basically. There's uh, plenty of those. And there are character cards. These are the character cards of all the different roles you can have. And they have their name and their abilities listed on them and a number, which is the order in which they get resolved. So there's plenty of those. And they have a number here in the top, which tells you for how many players uh, they are. So you need to uh, build your deck of characters depending on the number of players. And then you have these treasure cards. They have the same backs as these coin cards. And that will be basically your, your hidden treasure, your loot, because nobody needs to know how many coins you have. And these come in the denominations of 0, 2, 3, and 4. So that is everything that's in the box. Let's set up a game. To set up a game of Black Skull Island, you take the 44 coin cards, which are simply cards that have one coin printed on them and the same back as these cards. And you just put them face up in a stack and you take the 28 treasure cards, which are cards that have this treasure icon in the bottom and you give them a shuffle and they come in denominations of zero coins, two coins, three coins and four coins. So you shuffle all of those together and form a pile like so. The game has character cards with 16 different roles and some roles are in there multiple times. Then you give each player these two reference cards which are double-sided and have all 16 roles explained on them. And for a two or three player game you take all of these cards that have the little two plus in the top right corner over here. And when you're playing with four players you also add these two cards. With five players you add these two. With six you add these two. With seven, you add these two. With eight, those. And with nine, all of these cards. This is also indicated on the reference cards. Then you take the character cards, depending on the number of players. You shuffle them together and deal each player two character cards or three if you're playing a two-player game. Those players may look at their character cards, but don't show them to the other players. And next, take one of these coin cards and place it face down in front of you. There will always be one character card left, and you place that face up to the side of the play area. That is the removed card. Now you're ready to play. Let's explain how it's played. 
Black Skull Island is played over a number of rounds and every round a player will play a character card from their hand or two if you're playing a two-player game and they place them face down on the table. So every player simultaneously chooses one or two of those, places it on the table and then next all players reveal their card simultaneously. Then the third step is to resolve all of the character cards because they all have different abilities and you resolve them starting with the lowest number going up. You need to completely resolve a character's ability before proceeding to the next character. And when a character has been resolved it remains face up on the table unless some special ability says otherwise. And when all abilities have been resolved the players return their characters in front of them to their hands and that can and often will be different character cards than you played. Now all these cards have different abilities and they are all explained on these uh, reference cards. So for example let's take a look at this captain card here it says draw one coin and choose a face-up card the owner must exchange it with a card in their hand. So these kind of happenings these kind of abilities will kind of mess up your plan so there's a lot of take that in this game. Here's another example. So this uh, Pirate King says draw one treasure, then cover another face-up card. The owner draws one coin. So a face-up card needs to be covered and you draw a treasure. Now you never know what you're gonna get. You could get nothing or you could get two, three or even four coins. And then you place those cards face down in front of you. And the final step of a round is to check your booty. If any player has seven or more booty cards in front of them, then the game ends immediately. And those cards can be any combination of treasure cards or single coin cards. They have the same backs, so you never know what people have. And when that happens, players simply count up all of their coins from their single coin cards and their treasure cards, and the player with the most coins wins the game. And in case of a tie, the player who is holding the character with the lowest number at that moment wins the game. Now character abilities are always resolved in the order of their activation number from lowest to highest. And some character abilities may change the position of cards on the table. So as a result, some players may get to activate their abilities more than once in a round and others might not get a chance at all and only face-up characters get to resolve their abilities. If a character card is flipped face down due to some other ability, it's skipped. And like I said, in a two-player game, players will have two character cards in front of them, but they are also activated in order of their activation number. And those are all the rules for Black Skull Island. Let's go to my final thoughts. So my final thoughts on Black Skull Island by Luigi Farini. Let's start with the presentation as usual. So this is a card game, so all you're getting is cards, but they are of a nice quality. They are thick enough. They have a linen finish, a very colorful popping art. The artwork itself also is very funny. I really enjoy all of these uh, little piratey pieces of art. Uh, really nice illustrations. They're a bit comical and they are all different except for the roles that are uh, in there multiple times. But each different role has different art. And I also like these uh, treasure cards with the big uh, pirate coins on them. That's pretty cool as well. The rule book is thin and short and very easy to uh, read and to teach. So that's uh, well presented as well. The theme is funny. I like the idea of having a group of people sitting around the table being pirates and trying to get as much loot as they can from the stash and the player of course with most loot wins the game. I also really like the fact that it plays two to nine players. That's a lot of players you don't see that very often. So uh, that's pretty cool. The gameplay is I'm kind of uh, undecided about the gameplay because you have so many different roles. There's like 16 different roles and they are all on these uh, cards, these reference cards, but every player has two reference cards with that which are double-sided. So that's four sides that you need to read. And while you can see everybody's uh, roles because you play them out on the table, you never know what people are going to play. So after the first round, when roles have been dealt to people, you'll know one 
of both cards that they have and the other one is still secret and those cards may change hands during play so there's a lot of stuff you need to pay attention to you need to try and remember who has which role and what they do and of course you have these cards but you're looking at these a lot looking up what they do so that kind of takes away from the speed of the game because this is supposed to be a very quick take that kind of uh, action game of grabbing loot and thwarting the others and while that is a lot of fun, if you're trying to really wrap your mind around this game and try to figure out, so who's got which role and which numbers do they have, which is also on these cards. So you're constantly thinking, okay, so that player just got the deck hand, which is number 10, but they also have that other card that I haven't seen yet in the second round. So if they play that first, should I play a lower card or a higher card? But they might just play a different card. So in the end, trying to deduce which players have which cards and what they might play first in the next round is nigh impossible, especially when you're playing with multiple players. I mean, it goes up to nine. So at some point, I personally think that you just don't have to overthink it. Just go with it. Just play whatever you think will benefit you this round. And then stuff will happen. And if you have a high number, you'll probably one of the last players to actually do that action. If you can still do that action at all, because maybe somebody else swapped your cards around and you don't get to play at all, or you got something completely different. And on one hand, it's fun. It's just a quick, quirky, fun game. On the other hand, if you really want to grasp this game, it's not going to happen because you might try and beautiful mind this and try to remember which card everyone has and what they would likely play. It's going to be so random and different and people might not think like that. Other people might just, you know, play a random card, just see where it gets them. And that will just mess up your plans all the time. So I guess if you're the kind of player that really wants to be in control of what happens and wants to try and think what other people are going to do, this is probably not the game for you. But if you like lighthearted, take that games that you never know what's going to happen and oh no, you took my card and, and I'm going to grab that card from you. Just if you really like take that games, then this game is for you. Personally, I'm kind of undecided on this. Uh, it's kind of a 50-50 deal. I like playing it and I enjoy playing it, especially with bigger groups. I really enjoy this with eight or nine players. But don't take it too seriously. That's basically my point here. A negative point is the language dependency because all of these cards have text on them and this is really what the game is about. You need to know what all these cards do. You need to be able to understand what they do and you also need to take into account the numbers of course the order in which they're going to be played but that's not the issue it's really the text on the card so it's very language dependent so you do need to have a firm grasp of the english language to be able to play this now the replayability is okay uh, it is a relatively quick game so that means you know after you've played uh, one game you might just want to play another, but your miles may vary. Usually I play this with different uh, numbers of people. And usually after one game with a bigger group, we were done. But with smaller groups with three or four players, you might want to play it several times. So yeah, that's dependent on the people you play with, but it's okay. So all in all, I think the presentation is good. Artwork is good. Theme is fun. Uh, the gameplay itself for me is 50-50 and the language dependency that's a minor point so in the end I'm gonna give this a very small thumbs up it's for a certain crowd it's not for everyone but I'll play it if it comes up so in the end yeah it's okay I hope you enjoyed this video if you did please give it a thumbs up don't forget to subscribe and if you hit the bell icon you'll also get notified whenever I upload a new video thanks for watching and I'll see you next time on board game heaven